So I spent very early start to the day around the fields trying to get my dog back, which I did eventually. But I also know the time's going on. So as I say, I'll try and keep you awake. Um, but there's a certain amount of new information I want to get through as, as well. Can I also ask how many of you in the room have actually watched or heard me speak about common purpose before? Right, okay, thank, thank you for that. Now, I had, a, I had a problem with this talk because I thought there would be some, some people who were new and therefore I had to try and encapsulate the whole thing, plus we've got some new information. And I was going to try and make the talk shorter, um, but it's very difficult to do. In the end, I decided to go the other way, and I've put more slides in, but we're going to move through some of them a lot faster than I've done before. But I feel if I don't do this, we start to lose evidence. We're not going to be politically correct because that's half the problem in the country today. People are not speaking the truth because they are frightened to speak the truth or because cultural Marxism has stopped them using the correct words. And it's very important that we break through this barrier. So I'm not going to be politically correct. Now, some facts about me. These are quite important because there's all sorts of stories beginning to circulate, including the fact I wasn't a naval officer. Well, I was a naval officer, and I served from 1972 to 1993, and I took early retirement as a lieutenant commander. And I did that because at that stage I didn't like what was starting to happen to the Navy. There were some very strange decisions being made in line with the decisions we were seeing elsewhere. So I decided to leave. I was a frigate warfare officer and my specialisation was anti-submarine warfare. I was not a submariner. I spent time on submarines, limited periods, but my job was to find them, not to enjoy sweating on them. Okay, and... On leaving the Royal Navy, I got into business in Plymouth, and that's really where my story started, because that's where strange things started to happen, and I discovered that things weren't quite as they seemed. And that was a very good theme of John's talk, because he's basically been describing a deception to you, a deception about the money supply, and my talk is about a deception going on in the heart of society. And we need to understand these deceptions in order to fight. If you don't know your enemy, you can't fight your enemy. Is it a game? I respect John's comments that we've got to play the game, and we have got to play a game, but the game is a serious one because bankers playing around with money is resulting in people dying in hospitals, people committing suicide because they can't take the debt. So I believe it's a very serious thing, but we shouldn't be frightened of it, because if we understand it, we can fight it. Okay, now, the start of my story, which I've told before, but very simply, was a group of us wanted to do something good. We wanted to help unemployed people in an area of Plymouth called Devonport, and the idea was to get them repairing boats. I'm not going to give you all the detail, but in a short space of time, what should have been a nice project was resulting in death threats. And I was thinking, this is unbelievable. This is Plymouth. This is UK in 2000. It's not just Plymouth, I had a death threat in the whole country. Absolutely. Now, this is the main thing, that nothing seems to work. And I've, I've majored on this before. Nothing is working in the country. You all know it. Other people out there are beginning to see it. But what we've got to do is we've got to wake them up much quicker. If we don't, we're going to carry on sliding into this state of chaos. And that is the state that the bankers in particular want to create. That's when our property will be taken away from us. And when a new regime, if you want to call it a new world order that will take place in this country. It's serious, but I always put this slide up because we have the privilege of sitting here having a few beers and listening to a talk. Overseas, people are dying as a result 
of criminal activity by our government, international bankers, and their co-conspirators. Funny things. We are seeing funny things appear in the paper. We're seeing funny things happen around us. This is a church in Plymouth. It was called St. Michael's, but it's now been reduced to something rather different. Attacks are going on. They're not just taking place against Jews. They're taking place against ethnic minorities, and they're taking place against white people. And we need to understand this, because for the victims, life has become very serious. Cultural Marxism, it is not a joke. It is not a joke when you are not able to say it's a blackboard, when you are not able to say the chairman, but you describe it as the chair. It is not a joke because if your language is controlled, you are controlled. And this is a very important thing to remember. I don't know why this man keeps popping up. Speed cameras, they are about control and taking your money. They are designed to stress you as a driver. And that is why more and more of them are appearing. We've got strange things happening with our police. And in Devonport, they were doing a trial that the police were having mini video cameras on their helmets. So every contact with them was filmed. This is Orwellian and it's wrong and we need to stop it. We're seeing mosques arise around the country, and some people find that very worrying. Personally, I don't find it worrying. I find it indicative of a failure of my own country to adhere to its religion. We are seeing some strange connections between people we trusted and very unsavoury characters. And I believe at the moment some of you in this room will be starting to wonder whether the royal family still has your best interests at heart. I hope so. As a naval officer, I pledged allegiance to my queen and I expected to receive allegiance from her. Whether we have that or not at the moment, I am not sure. We need to find out. Fingerprinting. It's not a joke. It's happening, and it's going to be done with school children. This was a Christian centre, but they removed the cross, and it's been replaced with a wavy line to some people, but actually it's a serpent. How do I know it's a serpent? Because I just do. And here's a local college, Plymouth College of Further Education, and surprise, surprise, it's got a wavy line. Meaningless, or it has a meaning. Daily Mail just loves these people. Strange art. I took this a uh, couple of days ago. This has popped up near a business park in Plymouth. Totem poles. We're getting a lot of totem poles around Plymouth. In other parts of the city, we're seeing... Uh, cities around UK, we're seeing ugly structures, rusty, twisted sculptures, meaningless art. It is not a joke, it's a weapon, because they play on your mind. I don't know the true meaning of these sculptures, but I don't like them. Now, some of you have seen this picture before. Can anybody tell me what it is? What is it? I'm afraid you're wrong. What it is is torture. Pardon? Say, can you say again, sir? I didn't hear. Okay, it's torture. You are looking at people being tortured. And we, the British, have taken part in this. And we should be ashamed of ourselves. It is Guantanamo Bay. Correct. Um, an innocent-looking scene. We have somebody interfering with traffic lights, but it's a German company, Siemens, and Siemens are gradually taking over traffic control in cities ac across UK. And it will be German companies that take control for tracking of your car. We need to pay attention to these people. 
We've got children being taken away from their parents forcibly by the state under lies, perjury, threats, falsification of documents. And many of those children are being taken into a system of abuse by the state. We are seeing our heritage being destroyed through so-called New Deal programs, which don't give us a new deal. What they do is destroy our culture and heritage. We see the media starting to engage in politics. And here we have the disgraceful case of the BBC now thinking it can get involved in placing children for adoption. It has no idea where those children came from. It doesn't care because the BBC is now part of the political machine. Do you know that we have now got eugenics into schools? Can anybody tell me what eugenics is? Genetic engineering, but it really came to um, a peak in the 1920s, 1930s, uh, when we were heading towards selective breeding. And in America, not Germany, in America, there was a huge program of forced sterilization of the underclass. And now we are teaching this in schools. Life can be deceptive. Can I do a Tony Blair and take my jacket off? I was warned about my yellow tie on the previous video. And I was told that if I spoke to you as a naval officer, I had to dress appropriately. So I have, but I'm hot and I'm going to take my jacket off. No credibility. <laughs> Thank you. Now, a picture of a helicopter. Would anybody like to go for a ride in this helicopter? Life is deceptive. What's the matter with it? It's made out of plywood. The warship's real, the helicopter's not, because the helicopter didn't arrive in time, and therefore they built one. But it's just a little indication that when you're out there looking at life, you've got to think about it and see it through different eyes, because we are being deceived every way we turn. You know this one. Here is the ocean, and the question is, when is the sea at its most dangerous? And the answer is, when you forget how dangerous it is. And that's the same for our society. At the moment, we have got to wake up to what's happening and understand that it isn't a political game. It is warfare. And unless we get to grips with it, we and our families are going to suffer Red October, the threats there under the surface, it's the same in this country if we can see it, if we know what we're looking for. Huge submarine, if you know what you're looking for, you can find it. Now, this is really what we're about. This is the situation in the country. If we look over the land, we've got all sorts of labels, but you know what is going on. We've got chaos We've got quangos absorbing huge amounts of money. We've got bent politicians. We've got bent judiciary. We've got attacks on Christianity. We've got child snatching. It's all going on, and it hasn't suddenly arrived by magic. It's been created. And there are people, part of the conspiracy, who are pulling the strings. And above the clouds, I've given you some indication of who's pulling the strings. Now, the problem with this subject is, if we're not careful, we'll disappear down too many rabbit holes. So I want to concentrate tonight on looking at one organisation that I and many other people now believe is pulling strings, and that organisation is Common Purpose. I am not popular with Common Purpose, and neither are the other people who are now asking questions but we believe that finally we're starting to get some truth out about what, what is happening and what this organisation is doing. Inspiring leaders with common purpose. That's what the organisation says on the tin. But does it do that? It also talks about leading outside authority. That sounds a very innocent phrase until you start to apply it perhaps to a police officer. 
Here's the chief executive, Julia Middleton. I've never met her. Perhaps I will be able to do that at some stage. But she is a truly remarkable woman because in 1985 she pops up more or less from nowhere. She then has half a million pounds. She creates a charity. And from that point on, she is advising the whole country in how to be leaders. She's advising the military. She's in the NHS. She's in school. She's in government. In fact, select committees are asking Julia Middleton her opinion on leadership in the country. Well, this is phenomenal. Where did this lady come from? Well, her background is in overseas education in Switzerland and France. And she's then worked at Demos, which is a very interesting organization, which many would say is Marxist. But this lady is now running a very powerful charity which doesn't like revealing what it's really doing. Now, those of you at the back of the room will not be able to read these slides. I'm not going to try and let you read them because I'm just going to say the evidence is here. If you challenge me when I say this is what's on the slide, I'll let you see it afterwards again. But I want to prove to you that I've got the evidence. I'll read this out. It was sent in, sorry, it was sent back to a, a person from Simon Peters, A Common Purpose. It says, thank you for your recent query reproduced below. And the, the person had sent in, I would like to be reassured that the information about your organisation being put out by Brian Gerrish in Plymouth is totally without foundation and inaccurate. And Common Purpose says back, I can reassure you that these allegations made by Brian Gerrish and picked up by the BNP, CIB, Campaign for an Independent Britain, and David Icke are wildly inaccurate. We are an apolitical organisation dedicated to increasing the competency and connectedness of leaders, however they define themselves, a letter from our trustees addressing this issue can be found here. Notice what they decide to link me to. They decide to link me to CIB, to David Icke, and the BNP. They have failed to mention I've also given talks in Birmingham Central Mosque, which presumably would have linked me to Al-Qaeda. <laughs> they are very selective in their reply. Common Purpose also says it's apolitical, it's politically neutral. And I'm interested to see the word competency, which I don't believe exists in our vocabulary, but it does in the European Union. So there is what Common Purpose thinks of me, and I'm going to leave it to you to see whether my evidence refutes that opinion. The aims of common purpose. I'm not going to read every slide. I'm going to flick through. But can you read this at the back or not? Okay, I'll give you about 30 seconds. Are you all there? Do you all understand what it means? I mean, you can challenge me, but when I read that, I think there's a lot of legalese, and I'm not quite sure what they're talking about. It's very cloudy as far as I'm concerned, but this is supposed to be a wonderful charity getting in everywhere, teaching the military to lead, nurses to lead, but this is how they define themselves. I wonder if that's a smokescreen. Now, the next thing they do as a charity is they decide that they're going to work under Chatham House Rules, which is straight out of the Tavistock Institute, I think I'm correct in saying, and that says you're not going to reveal who's at a meeting, you're not going to reveal who said what. That's a pretty interesting situation when Common Purpose may bring together people from the public sector with lots of money and perhaps private developers who are very keen on getting their hands on that money. I don't even have to say there's any criminal activity taking place, 
but one has simply got to ask questions of what took place behind the closed door. They're very keen on diversity, and I was happy to discuss this subject with the Muslims as I am with you or anybody else who's here in the audience. And what Common Purpose wants to do is put an equal number of people of any ethnicity or background on a board. The trouble with this is, if you draw a diagram on a piece of paper, it ends up that the majority will actually be grossly underrepresented. You only have to draw the diagram. This is a sort of inverse discrimination. Okay? The other thing is right down the bottom, is it says Common Purpose is going to discuss the range of influences that prejudice your views. Oh, I've had a good look at you, and you look like reasonable people to me, but I suspect you've got a lot of prejudices. Would anybody like to tell me about your prejudices? The police prejudice. Well, what I'm getting at is Common Purpose would like to know what you think. The Be coroner's courts. Okay. I'm coming in a slightly different angle because what Common Purpose wants you to say is what you believe so that when your ideas are out in the open, perhaps they can be moulded slightly. I'm going to say perhaps. Now, in Plymouth, we quickly found Common Purpose everywhere in the fabric of that city. Everywhere you went, the council the police, the hospitals, the schools, everywhere. And I can assure you that that pattern is repeated across cities in the country. How did they get there and what do they do? Well, what they're looking at doing is getting into the control structure of a city. And it is a fact that in any organisation, it's a few people who wield the power. That's what's going on with the, with the bankers. So if you can get your common purpose people who have been trained to believe in a common purpose, and we don't know what that is. But if you can get them into position, those people can start to influence the city. Now, if anybody here has done a common purpose course, I'm not saying you personally are doing anything wrong. In fact, what I'm trying to do is perhaps show you some things about the organisation you've joined, which you might not be aware of. At the bottom, of our pyramid in Plymouth, we discovered that common purpose people also included crooks and we believe some paedophiles. Now, common purpose has attempted to twist that statement by saying that I'm saying they breed paedophiles. I didn't say that. What I said is we believe some of their members are. But remember the meetings behind closed doors under Chatham House rules. Who could, who could meet? who did meet. Now this is the diagram, it's the best one I can do, showing that Common Purpose works from a high level structure and it then sets up little cells in each, cities, each city which it calls advisory boards and those advisory board members select and recruit, recruit and select people at a much lower level, right the way down through society, right the way across society and they are into schools. And I said last time, boy, they love children. Now, people who've got more capacity than me took a look into certain aspects of sites of common purpose is original site. And remember, we're going back quite a long time now. We're going back to about 1996. And they found statements connected to common purpose, linked to common purpose, of this nature. How to control a city. How to select children and effectively groom them to become fu excuse me, future leaders. And the future leaders are going to control society, but they're not elected democratically. They are chosen. And if you don't like it, ordinary people are going to be coerced, engineered into the correct society. Now, these are very interesting expressions. And the, the person who read them initially, who was well-trained, he came from a similar background to me, but I can tell you was involved with intelligence material, he knew what he was looking at. 
And this is dangerous stuff. Common purpose loyalties to be solely to common purpose. Now this is an instant breach of the Official Secrets Act if you're involved with the military. This is the diagram, common purpose sitting in the middle. In red, it sucks in information from some very interesting trusts and bodies, Demos, Foreign Policy Center, the top left-hand corner, the Council of Foreign Relations. All the ideas get pumped in, and then Common Purpose recruits people and pumps its people into the fabric of society. But down the right-hand side, what we're seeing is the EU government, which is already installed in UK. So if, if you see anything with a regional title, it's part of the EU system. And that is where huge amounts of money have been spent. Now, the other thing which hasn't been in previous videos is you'll see in a block, I'm talking about 170,000 quangos. What I really mean is charity type quangos. There are over 170,000 charities. They have a budget of 44 billion. What do they do? Didn't we get on better before they existed? Look at the money, because the money is the fuel. And that money is pouring in from the European Union, and they do not like accounts. They don't want accounts. We know that because the European Union itself has not audited its own accounts. But that money is frittered out in society, and that causes the fraud and corruption. Here's a diagram. It's very simplistic, but the red pins give you an indication of the dispersion of common purpose cells across the country. Okay, and notice the concentration across in Northern Ireland. We've got some very good people talking to us from Northern Ireland, and the information we passed them has already produced results. A single pin in a country area is about one to ten people. If you see a red pin in a major urban area, you're dealing up to 400 people per pin. All right? Now, what is this charity doing? We're waiting to see, but we don't really like what we see at the moment, and we believe they've got some explaining to do. I'm not going to tell you what the other pins are at the moment, except the black pins are where we know some very unpleasant stuff is going on. You might care to look over at this area. Does anybody know where that is? South Wales. South Wales. Keep going. Pardon? Bridge End. Thank you. What's special about Bridge End? 22 suicides. And I am absolutely stunned that people are not talking about it day after day. It is totally unacceptable. It's not normal. 22 suicides in a very strange area. There's a man in the Express this week trying to say it was due to mobile phone masks. He didn't bother to tell you that in English classes, some of the kids had had to write suicide notes or epitaphs. He didn't tell you about the creative dance classes. He didn't tell you the effects of teaching young children about homosexuality, which by university reports themselves show that those children will go on to have a much higher suicide rate. So there are some very, very nasty things going on in Bridge End, and we should be demanding action. The trouble is, many people think that the very people who should be defending people and protecting them are the people perpetrating this horrible business. It is a game, but it's a serious game. If we learn how to play the game, we can fight. These are very old ones. You've seen them before. Can I prove that Common Purpose was in Plymouth City Council? Yes, I can, because this is one of their companies, and this is the minutes showing that they're involved. This is very old and faded um, email, also showing Common Purpose using a City Council officer to recruit further Common Purpose members. 
He's using public computers. He's doing it in public time. He's abusing his position. But this is evidence that common purpose activity is being done in public time. I can prove money is spent. This is the Southwest RDA, 30,000. This is Government Office Southwest, 60,000. Any of you short of money? Any of you resent how much you pay in your council tax? Do you now realize where the money's going? But you let it happen. At the moment, you are happy to let it happen. You are very, very nice people. But I hope at the end of the evening I can get you motivated to perhaps focus a bit of energy in getting some of your money back. Now, funny things happen when you ask about common purpose. I don't know why, but they tend to lie or have difficulty remembering. So when I ask Devon and Cornwall Police how much money you've spent and how many people are involved, um, they tell me they can't remember. Well, they don't know. That's what the letter says. We, we, we haven't got any information. So when I tell them that the Chief Constable was then involved with Common Purpose, a lady called Maria Wallace, who was eventually effectively sacked for a shambles, but she was not very well, I feel quite sorry for her, and I mean that, when I told them that she was involved and I gave three other names, suddenly they were able to tell me that they'd spent £57,000 on it. Now, how many of you have heard the police constantly bleating they have insufficient money? Have you heard that? But here's £57,000 gone on a charity created by a woman that suddenly popped out of nowhere in 1985. So my question is why? And why were the police having trouble saying how much they've spent? Why did they not want to tell me? When I asked for more information, they had to tell me that they needed to ask common purpose before they could reply. Well, this is very interesting. We now have a police force having to ask a charity before they give me the taxpayer information. Now, is it me or is something not right? I actually think something is very, very wrong. Now, I'm sorry, this slide upset a few people. But I love it. For those of you who can see, the fox is in the middle of the pack of hounds, but somebody got upset with the word poo on the top. <laughs> but it's a lovely photograph, and we are in the middle of a lot of poo at the moment. And we've got to do something about it, and we need to do it quickly. If we do the right things, we can stop it. Here's a lovely lady, Cressida Dick, common purpose trained, Oxford University trained, responsible for the Men Menendez incident. And then what did they do? They promoted her. She's now, she's now involved with royal security. So well done, common purpose Cressida Dick. Now there's another lady. I'm not going to bring up the source document, but this was only given to me today. It shows that a Chief Inspector Ellie Bird from West Mid Midlands Police went on a wonderful common purpose course and she went over to Europe and she met, amongst other people, people from the Deutsche Bank. No, I'm sorry, I thought in the beginning I saw common purpose saying it was apolitical. But here we have a police officer going to Europe with common purpose and mixing with German bankers. I have a question, and that is, what are German bankers going to do to improve policing in the West Midlands? Is it me, or is something wrong? When we ask people information, they have a problem replying. When we talked to the editor of a local paper and we asked him if he was involved with Common Purpose, he wrote back and said, you're misinformed, I'm not a graduate member. So he was pretty clear. But when we checked on a simple list of common purpose people, down at the bottom we find that editor listed. So I ask another question, several questions. Did he lie? Did he forget? Was he confused? It seems every time you ask questions about common purpose, people get confused. But we pay for the training. Now here is a gentleman, Richard Bailey, senior man in the government office of the South West, and he said that when he 
gets involved with common purpose, he does it as an individual citizen in his private time. But of course he wrote that on headed paper, presumably in public time. You're lovely people because you paid for that paper. But the trouble is that on the 19th of May 2005, we've got this man under the initials RB attending a Power Map Programme Day. And if you look at the time he was going to give a speech, it, I believe I'm correct in saying that's the middle of the working day. So was he misguided, did he forget, or is he lying? Now, this one is common purpose, it's original document, and in the middle under schools, a common purpose person wants to be led towards the right head teachers to recruit them into common purpose. Now I ask the question, what does a right head teacher mean? And this one, they're rejecting a person because a, a David Coe of Coe's department store, Ipswich, I'd love to meet that man, uh, he didn't get selected because he's too Ipswich. I wonder what that means, but I think, Mr. Coe, they're trying to say that maybe you're a little bit too countryfied, but I may be wrong. Here's Common Purpose taking money, £250 from a council. Notice uh, the title of the gentleman giving it, Head of European and Economic Development. Uh, this one is a common purpose email sent around Leeds where a lady is saying that the advisory boards, do you remember the cells in each city? That they are the eyes and ears of common purpose. So I ask another question. What is a charity, why does a charity require people to be listening and watching? And who are they listening and watching for? Well, I know they're listening and watching for me and I know they're listening and watching for other people who are asking questions about common purpose. And we will shortly be delighted to prove that to you. The police are involved, and here is a, a uh, senior police officer getting involved with an advisory group. In fact, he's more or less running it on police paper. Here is common purpose using office space within a public body, and the Yorkshire Post about three weeks ago, ran an article exposing that in one location alone, Common Purpose had had office space worth about £5,000 a year for free over 11 years. And I can tell you that, and I can prove it, that is happening all over the place, in prisons, in universities, etc. So what you've got, my military mind says, is little cells buried amongst the public sector and I'd like to know what those cells are doing. They take more money, education leads, they were lining up here to take um, 9,600 one year, 10,000, 5,000, 5,400. Schools generally desperately short of money but common purpose can come along and suck £20,000 out of an education budget and you the taxpayer and indeed many councillors, elected councillors, will never ever have seen and know about this transfer of money. Common Purpose seems to have power over people. Here's Common Purpose talking to a gentleman, I think he might be the chief executive of Leeds, and in the second sentence it says, they say to him, don't worry, it's just a case of signing the letter. Now, you know, when your husband or your partner says, don't worry, just sign it, dear, you get suspicious, don't you? But here we have a charity manipulating people in the public sector, and we have got tons of evidence of this going on. This is the public sector, the chief executive of Preston City Council, helping recruit almost one third of the group joined as a result of your efforts. Now here's the big money people coming in, and this is where my talk I think links so well with John's. He started at the top of the tree, I'm down amongst the weeds, but we find the connections because here's big money people who have been sponsoring Common Purpose. And I believe I'm correct in saying Common Purpose was given about four million funding from one charity, um, lottery, whatever it was, can't remember now, 
but that was to build a website. I am very interested in paid work building websites at four million a site. Now this is a new one that's come in. Uh, basically, it's, it's again showing that a chief executive, Paul Rogerson of Leeds City Council, is recruiting for, for common purpose. I'll just show you. Here's the man, here is his name and title as Chief Executive of Leeds City Council. He sent it to a Peter Noble, but it was obviously a temp, um, template letter and he's got the wrong name, so he said, Dear David, it should be Dear Peter. But basically the letter has gone out and it's on common purpose headed paper. So we have a Chief Executive of Leeds City Council working for common purpose, using his title on their headed paper. Do you understand the significance of that? Because this is very important. And here comes back Paul, and he says, further to your recent correspondence, I wish to confirm that I would be delighted to be a member of the Common Purpose Leads Advisory Group. Now, that's a very nice letter, and we liked it a lot, because look at how he's addressed it. Peter Noble, the Director of Health Development, has sent it back to the Chief Executive of Leeds City Council, but care of common purpose. Yeah? There's about 30,000 of these people out there. Remember that map with the red pins? I deliberately haven't put put all of the ones on, and in fact I'm looking at a gentleman in the audience and I'll keep my eye moving because I have to thank him for putting the pins in. Now, if you go to www.commonpurpose.net, there's a new little website. It's worth going to because it's Common Purpose refuting the scurrilous accusations being made by myself and other people. And they deny various things. Are we, good? Are we wasting money? No, we provide good training. So I recommend you go to the site, read it yourself. But I had to pick this one out because they asked a question, is common purpose using brainwashing techniques? And this is their answer, no. Common purpose programs use experiential training techniques and a set of conventions to promote mutually respective behavior amongst all participants. There are no tests, there are no brainwashing techniques, there's no coercion. That's what they say. So, sorry, if I just jump back, at the bottom it says that experiential learning is widely used mythology and is largely associated with a David A. Kolb, Professor of Organisational Behaviour in the Weatherreed School of Management. You're all happy with that? So I thought I'd go and have a look at Mr. Kolb, because he sounds like a good chap. And in one of his papers, one of his papers, I find straight away reference to Jung. And if you want to read some of that, it's to do with how you can actually manipulate people's thought processes. Now, I must be missing something here, but we had an apolitical organisation in the beginning. It's a charity, but actually it's manipulating people in the public sector. And when you see about the training techniques, they themselves tell you that they are using some pretty he heavy behavioural training techniques. Now, I don't know what they're doing. Uh, what I'm saying to you publicly is I'd like to know a lot more about what they're doing because if you look on any little notice board in a shop now, you'll find a lot of people offering self-empowerment courses, neuro-linguistic programming, change your whole life. And while some of those courses can be perfectly good, others are highly dangerous and can men make you mentally ill. Now, I am curious that I and other people have helped a number of individuals who have had unpleasant experiences from common purpose training and individuals. And I have had a total of eight ladies who were suffering in some way 
Am I in a position to say that was definitely linked to common purpose training? No, but the circumstantial evidence seems pretty good. Were we able to help them? Yes. But I'd like to know what common purpose is doing, and I'd like to know particularly what they're doing in schools with teenagers and young children. People in other sectors of society involved, this is the army, senior officers, and I state again publicly, I believe they are breaching or have breached the Official Secrets Act by even hosting this organisation. Um, this is uh, Strathclyde Fire Officer, who when some of his officers didn't want to get involved in a homosexual rally, right down at the bottom he said they were at to attend diversity courses. Now, one of the things I can tell you is that ever since I did the first Leicester talk, my telephone has rung on average between two and six times a day with people reporting usually something along the lines of, oh my God, I watched your video and, and, it, and it all makes sense. I work in the NHS, this has been happening. I work in a school, this has been happening. But one lady called me and she said, Brian, I've got a slightly different story. And that is that my partner was a police officer. He did a diversity training course and he changed. And I have got people telling me their partners did common purpose training and changed. That's what they tell me. I leave it to you to decide whether that's sufficient evidence to say common purpose is doing something wrong. I believe we need to ask some questions. If we start to look at people they deal with, it's elitist. It says it's for everybody, but if you look at who they select, they go for the elite. And this is part of the Independent Commission on Good Governance, the sort of people you would go to if you had a problem with people doing bad things in the public sector. But quickly, you find that Common Purpose has penetrated that organisation. They're warning people. This is a letter that went out to the advisory groups warning that requests were coming in from information on those groups and council expenditure. And it said they consulted lawyers, um, but they decided that uh, they would just let these people run. A charity who checks up on people. Here's Julia Middleton. And in the at the top, you can see she's linked with Demos. As John correctly recommended, do the research yourself. Go and see what Demos is, and I'm sure you'll be interested in what you find. Um, Charles Landry, Linked, and Jeff Mulgan, and they wrote a book, the other, the other Invisible Hand, Remaking Charity for the 21st Century. I'm beginning to think that Common Purpose is a remade charity, and I'm not sure I'm very impressed with how it's been remade. Here's Demos with Catherine Fleshy, Acting Director and Common Purpose Mixing. And the bit that caught my eye as a naval officer or an ex-naval officer is at the bottom, we've got Lifting the Lid, the civil service in the UK, Sir Richard Mottram, Security and Intelligence Coordinator, and Permanent Secretary of the Cabinet Office. So that's a nice little tea party going on um, with common purpose involved. I smell something at work and it's not very nice. This is a bit more, we won't dwell, but the, sorry, we will, just one thing. This is actually going across to the European Parliament. Now remember, this is an apolitical charity but it seems to spend an awful lot of its focus on the European Union. What are we looking at well, basically, this is a programme for a day that was hosted by the European Economic and Social Committee. And so Common Purpose has shipped a load of top-level people over to go and visit and mix with high-level European people. And what that is, is a, is a pure briefing on the wonders of the European Union. Now remember where most of the money's coming from to pay for this is coming out of the public sector, which means you paid for these courses. And Common Purpose on that website I mentioned 
www.commonpurpose.net says its courses range from 495, I think, to 5,000. Well, something's gone astray because the top level courses were nine grand. I'm going to stop while we change the tape. And so if you're, I'm watching the eyes and you're doing pretty well. But if you're still with me, I'll finish off. The other thing is that this, uh, this last few weeks, during the last few weeks, the Queen has signed the last and final treaty. Now, since that, we feel that we can no longer play the national anthem. So tonight, we shall be playing I Vow to Thee My Country, and I've got some little leaflets to give out with the words on. I'm afraid there aren't enough to go around. We did them in a bit of a rush. But if you could share them and you'd like to join us, uh, you'd be very welcome. Thank you. I'm just going to rattle through these slides till we get to the to the important ones, which is talking about what we do about this mess. But I wanted to show you this slide because here we've got Common Purpose and we've got the BBC linked in quite nicely, as you would expect. Uh, <coughs> Pravda. Yeah, OK. Um, now, here's Common Purpose, and it's clearly advertising the benefits of the European Union for school children. To my mind, this is political bias. Or am I wrong? Now, these are very interesting statements made by people who've done common purpose training. The first one from Susan Rice, the chief executive of Lloyd's. There are no easy answers and common purpose is no easy ride. It challenges every personal and professional pr prejudice you have. It's unsettling. This is a charity doing a course, and that lady is describing being unsettled, both personally and professionally. I believe this is significant, particularly when Common Purpose itself says it's dealing with young type training techniques. I leave you to draw your own conclusions. The first one of, of this page by somebody called Arvinda Gohill, the Assistant Director of Lead Regulation, Lead Regulation Housing Corporation, sometimes we need to be forced out of our usual ways of thinking. So common purpose is apparently forcing people out of their normal ways of thinking and presumably forcing them into a new way of thinking. Are they doing the same thing with children? Here's the big commercial names involved, Vodafone, but there's a list a yard long. Can we link them into the top level of the government? Yes, we can. This is to do with the Prime Minister's office. Oh, here's the children again. But look at people who are mentioned on the same page. We've got Peter Tatchell, spokesman from Outrage. We've got the managing director and European legal director of Lehman Brothers. So here's the big banking boys. And um, we've got Mardi Sharma, member of the European Economic Social Committee. I believe the evidence is beginning to build quite nicely that common purpose is actually a European Union tool. Here's the police uh, involved, high level with common purpose. Um, transforming teachers. We're going to change teachers. We're changing hospitals. We're changing schools. We're changing car tax. We're changing everything. And now we're going to change teaching. And um, I believe we've got uh, Julia Middleton in here somewhere. I've lost her at the moment. Perhaps I'm doing her a disservice, but it's in there somewhere. Uh, Matthew Taylor. Oh, yeah. Biz yeah, you've got a... Thank you. Well spotted. I'm, I'm beginning to lose my touch. Um, here's high level stuff at number 10. So this charity's got access to very high level. It's got access to huge amounts of money. I'm going to flick through these. Citizens Connection, Camelot. Now, Julia Middleton. She's such an incredible lady. She's now involved with something else called the Media Standards Trust. 
And this is to do with a group under the chairmanship of Sir David Bell of the Financial Times, um, meeting with a group of other people, including police officers and others, and they decided they weren't happy with the media. And what was needed was to have a system of ensuring the media was open and honest. So this little cabal of people appointed themselves to, um, to monitor the media. So here's the board members of the Media Trust. Have you, oh, you've all heard of it already, have you? No. Oh, dear. Oh, well, perhaps you ought to find out. Because now, as you'll see, Julia Middleton, the Chief Executive Officer of Common Purpose, is also going to tell you whether the BBC is impartial or not. Or not. <laughs> Who is this woman? I mean, she is better than Father Christmas. But look who she sits next to. Executive Vice Chairman of Rothschild. The Vice Chairman of Morgan Stanley. So apparently the Rothschilds and Morgan Stanley are now going to make sure that our media is open and honest and reports correctly. Sir. Uh, um, <laughs> An email I saw suggested that the Rothschilds, the House of Rothschilds, are worth between 100 and 300 trillion dollars. Right, thank you for that. It's an interesting sum of money. I think at the moment, on John's basis, we can ask what are these bankers doing? Was this meeting held under Chatham House rules of the Tavistock Institute? And who are these people? You'd probably also like to know that at least initially, the um, the headquarters, the office of the Media Standards Trust, was actually inside Common Purpose's headquarters in London. So that's pretty cosy, isn't it? So we've got a cell structure being implemented across the country. It's recruiting children to become future leaders. And now it's got its teeth into the media. Does this sound like East Germany? Is it, is it go on, tell me, is it my imagination? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> now, I could give you a lot on funding, but this is just a little spreadsheet, and I'm very interested in this because these figures of about £700,000 of public money spent on common purpose, this, this isn't exhaustive, this is a sample, but these figures were rooted out for the first time by a Member of Parliament. Yes, the unbelievable has happened. A Member of Parliament has suddenly decided to start asking some serious questions about common purpose, and they've been very surprised at the amounts of money being spent on a training course where you can't understand what it does or trains. Philip, Philip Davis. Now, this is the truth. And you need to understand the truth, because if you don't, you cannot fight. The country is not falling apart. It's not sliding into chaos. It is actually being taken apart. Salami slicing. The hospitals are being run into the dirt, because no other European country has an NHS, and therefore our NHS has to be collapsed and it will be collapsed in a way that you will get so desperate, you will say, there must be a better way. And they will say, yes, there is a private system. Schools are being driven into the dirt. The police are being driven into the dirt. Before you can create a new utopia, and I believe that is what Common Purpose teaches, you have to destroy the old society. And the bad news for us is we're watching our society being destroyed. The enemy is amongst us, but the first weapon is the truth. And all you've got to do is talk about it. Tell people what you know and start to demand action. We're talking subversion, and it's a weapon, psychopolitics. Military textbooks, they teach about bullets and guns and bombs and missiles. They also teach, teach about psychological warfare, how you undermine an army, how you undermine a population. 
and you do it by screwing around with their minds. And that is what is being done to you. Whether you watch BBC TV, or you perhaps get involved with Common Purpose, or you pay attention to political correctness, you are having your mind interfered with, and taken to an extreme, it is capable of making you depressed and ill. All right? My training taught me some of this. I've learned a lot more since. There's some very heavyweight people out there warning of more of this. So if you want to stop it, you have to recognize it. The attack is across the whole spectrum of society. Church, education, health, military, etc. And this is the ultimate purpose that we're going to become so demoralized we are going to be taken over by the European Union. The European Union is a vicious police state. I have absolutely no doubt. And the first thing that vicious police states do is they murder the previous leaders. So the politicians in Westminster need to wake up because when this monster arrives, we are going to be unhappy, but they are going to be very unhappy. If you speak out, they undermine you, they defame you. So here I am, I have been branded a lunatic, a swiveled-eyed loon, which I now understand is a bird of some description, so maybe that's not bad. I've apparently had ner nervous breakdowns numerous times. Uh, I wasn't a naval officer, apparently. Uh, I'm only doing this because my wife has run off with a common purpose person. Uh, my 26th wedding anniversary comes up shortly. So a whole pack of lies is now being told about me, and a lot of it on blog spots, and I'm delighted because it tells me we are beginning to hurt these people. Yeah. Yeah. I'd, I'd like to read this letter to you because it's so wonderful. Um, it's um, from Julia Middleton to Glynis Kinnock and Elunid Morgan. Uh, dear Glynis and Alunid, thank you for forwarding the correspondence you've received about Common Purpose. We are aware of the internet posting of the event chaired by Roger Helmer MEP for the Campaign for an Independent Britain, with Brian Gerrish as a speaker. That's me. Over the last couple of years, Common Purpose has come under attack from a small group of individuals, notably Brian Gerrish and David Noakes, who believe we have a pro-European agenda. I don't know what you think. Criticism has also come from the United Kingdom Independence Party and the British National Party. The fact that the Muslims, particularly in Birmingham Central Mosque, who have now been told the truth, are also digging, don't get a mention. These individuals are making untrue, offensive and defamatory claims about common purpose on the internet, which are being repeated on various conspiracy theory blogging sites. We're also being notified of a large number of Freedom of Information Act requests being received by public sector organisations about their relationship with common purpose and the information from these requests is then appearing on the internet. Common Purpose is very proud of its track record of working with leaders of all backgrounds, ages and sectors. We receive a broad spectrum of media coverage, presumably under her Media Standards Trust, that highlights the positive impact of our leadership development programmes and award schemes. Our reputation is very important to us and Common Purpose is founded on the principles of... in. <laughs> Sorry... Our reputation is very important to us and common purpose is founded on the principles of independence and non-alignment. The Common Purpose trustees recently issued a brief response to these criticisms on our website. This, along with a list of trustees, is attached for your reference. The campaign against us is time-consuming and distressing for staff to deal with, as well as undoubtedly defamatory. 
we have been advised the sensible approach is not to give these claims oxygen by responding to them. I would welcome your advice if you have experience of handling these sorts of matters. Is it my imagination or was the Kinnick family tasked with cleaning up fraud and corruption in the European Union? And have they failed? I believe they did. And I also believe I'm correct in saying that the European Union still has not rendered a, a full audited set of accounts. So I'm fascinated that um, Julia has such a friendly relationship with these people. But really, I've put my cards on the table because I've proved to you a tiny fraction of what we know. And I've shown you now what Common Purpose is saying and doing. It, it, it is actually signed by Julia. I, I, I treasure this. Now, um, that's for me to know, sir. Um, now, the thing is that Common Purpose is going flat out to find who we are at the moment. And they are demanding freedom of information, information from councils. We have some very exciting information about to come online. I can't give it to you tonight. I'm going to hold you in suspense. I'm getting better at this game. But basically, Common Purpose is out there trawling to find out who's sending in a freedom of information request. The only thing is, it would appear that they've now coerced a number of councils and a police um, authority to break the Data Protection Act. So we now have Common Purpose people who are confused or lying or something, giving out personal details in clear breach of the Data Protection Act. That is going to be interesting. This is the type of attack, and if you've got the column, I think it's on page 11, you will find that the, the attack is mapped out. That's not a joke. This is real stuff. Overt and covert. You've got to get to grips with this right-hand side. All the things to do with regionalization are the established EU government in this country. And we need to attack it and bring it down. So I've just realized the papers a lot of you got are the old editions. It's page 11 in, in the June edition. Now, this is the situation. The country's on a knife edge. On the left-hand side, keeping things just about stable, are the good guys. That's us. There are still good civil servants. There are still good politicians. And there's a lot of good people, millions of them. But the trouble is they're asleep. And on the right-hand side, trying to push us into a dictatorship, we've got a huge number of quangos. We've got a propaganda machine. We've got banking institutes. And we've got, it should be, 170,000 quangos. Now, all we need to do to get the country back into a democracy is to chop the lot on the right away. It is so easy. Now, for the first time, we are beginning to get fired up because we now have local councillors realising that it is the officers who control the council. A person has spoken to me tonight to say that a friend has said it, a friend of mine in Plymouth said it, and we've had it repeated in other cities. We've also got local councillors digging themselves to find out what Common Purpose is doing in their council, and they don't like what they're finding. Now, all you've got to do is tell the truth. You know the joke that goes from the north of Scotland, and then it's repeated in Land's End in two days. When the truth comes out about what is being done to our society, it is going to spread around the country like wildfire. And the good people are going to say, we've had enough of this. We're going to chop contact with these organisations. They are starting to do it. We need to encourage them. And the way I believe we have to encourage them is to keep telling them what is really coming if we don't do this. If I haven't convinced you of how serious it is, I don't know what to do apart from say, 
Go and read any book on a dictatorship, Stalin, Mao Zedong, wherever. Right, finishing off, the evidence for the background of the European Union is overwhelmingly clear. When you go and look for it, it emerges from the regime of the Nazis. Very easy. Other sites are reporting a pattern emerging across the EU where people who exercise their democratic right are being confronted by aggressive police. We can see it happening. That is what is there in the background. We have an enemy amongst us. You want to fight, tell the truth. When you leave here, speak in the post office queue. I do it in a loud voice. My wife used to wince, and now she's fine. Somebody says something, I'll say yes, but that's to do with the EU. And of course, have you seen this stuff on where the EU came from and the Nazi party? And you'll find people are wobbling. <laughs> now, it is more complicated than that because there's a hint of fascism and there's a bit of, a bit of socialism in there as well. But I believe keep it simple. If you've got a tank rumbling towards you, let's call it a tank. Let's not get into debate about whether it's a T-42 or a 48. It's a tank. Tell the truth. And if you can do one thing for me, get out there, get on to your local councillors, get on to your MPs and demand that this crypto charity, this false charity, is stripped out of our society. Okay? That's the minimum. I guarantee once this starts to be exposed, you're going to see a whole stack of things come down like a pile of bricks. So we are feeling very bullish. We know that common purpose is wobbling, and we know the government is getting edgy. We also know that the Queen is now hearing people are reporting treason. So get out there and get poking sticks into the establishment because we are finally beginning to wake people up. Thank you. He wants me to tell you that uh, the, this evening will be recorded on a film on Google Video. So you'll be able to have a copy of it uh, later on if you wish. Um, could I just tell you about something that I read in the Echo, uh, January 19th, 2007. Uh, it was a, a, a little article, there it is. You can all have a copy as you go out if you like. Um, and it's, it's talking about a young man. My name is, is Ben Shepherd. I'm a presenter on GMTV and The Extra Factor. Uh, and he's writing to us for your reader's help in, to find young people in Bournemouth who have done something positive for their school or community. These teenagers deserve to be recognised, encouraged and rewarded for the valuable work they do to make their schools and communities better places. And by entering the... Deutsche Bank Spotlight Awards, young people in Bournemouth will be making the headlines for all the right reasons, with up to £5,000 prizes for the winners and certificates of recognition to all nominees. This initiative really does celebrate the positive, and then it goes on. And the thing that really got me, my attention had been taken by the Deutsche Bank thing, but it hadn't really dawned on me at that point. And then at the end it says... For more details on the awards and, and how to enter, visit Common Purpose and then there's the website address. Or call Tracy Thurgaard on and then there's a the telephone number. And Ben Shepherd on behalf of the Deutsche Bank Spotlights Award. Now isn't that just very, very interesting? There you are. You, go, you can have a copy as you go out. Right, can I I'll just say, John's at the back, so I hope he's going to come forward. Um, can I just say to you all, thank you very much for coming. I'm delighted to see so many people, and thank you for bearing with us till late, because I know it's your Friday night, but it's, it really has been fantastic to see a lot of you, so thank you very much. Any, any questions? Yeah, um, can we do a show of hands about how you found out about it? Who saw an advert? Right. 
is somebody going to count or am I going to count or are we going to do it approximate? Five. All right, one, one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, Come on, let's twelve. Have a I think it's eight, eight, about 13, 14, I think. Um, who were, who's come as a result of being told by a friend? All right. So does that tell us that networking is the best thing? But would you consider that most of you are already well informed? Right, so what we need to do is see how we draw in new people. Is that enough? Anybody who's done common purpose? Who's? I'm in common with you, mate. It doesn't make you a bad person. Sorry. No, can I answer? I did note that you linked NLP with brainwashing. And I would like to say there are a lot of good people doing good work helping people using NLP. So it's not used as a brain. And we're not necessarily members of Common Purpose. All right. Because it's very important. I, I'm really sorry if I didn't say that there, there's good. As with most things, there are there are. Uh, skills, um, techniques, which can be put to good use and can be put to bad use. So I, I'm very happy with that because I know there's all sorts of things going out of courses where, where people are being helped. I agree with you. Just, yeah. uh, I'd like to say, I was on the demonstration, uh, demonstrating against George Bush visiting, and your comments on the end about the aggressive attitude of the police. The police actually put an agent uh, provocateur in the crowd yeah. who actually started the riot mm -hmm. in London. So that's how bad things are. The police that's are resorting to starting the problems so that they can beat the hell out of them. They're doing that almost every day of the week with people. Yeah. Yeah. Creating a fight, well, well, and then when the police come, they arrest the guy, the innocent guy. It's okay. happening all the time. You, you're seeing an effect. Where you need to start looking is where the police training is done. And if you start to look at the police training colleges, you will find they are being taught some very strange things. And remember the little story I told you about the lady who described a major personality change in her police officer, I can't remember, husband or partner, after he had done a diversity course. And I can tell you that this is being reported by other people. Program Darren Brown, the heist, mm. and he programmed people to carry out bank robberies in London after they heard a bit of music. It is so simple. You, you just plant a seed into something, they go off and do it. Well, there are there are there are grades of this. We we know this. There are grades of it, but it is it is a fact that it is per perfectly possible to take a group of people into a closed environment for four, forty eight hours and to change their views. That is perfectly possible. And it's very interesting that the matrix, or the, the no, I think it's called now, which is Common Purpose's uh, residential course, is 48 hours, usually in a small hotel somewhere. We've got some more digging to do. But in response to the lady who's talked about the good side, and I'm very happy with that, we need also to understand that these techniques can cause problems. A hypno, 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 sorry, hypnosis can cause problems to some people, and techniques like creative visualization, we've got documented evidence from teachers who themselves experienced unpleasant, adverse images in their mind as a result of being trained to teach the children. Now, these, the people we're up against are not nice therapists, you are dealing with some of the most cold calculating military or pseudo-military people going. So don't underestimate them. Is there any information that I can, can I go to your website, can I go anywhere to find out whether this is happening within the school that I'm in? Um, we are I'll repeat the question. The lady at the front has said, is there anywhere she can go to in order to find information on, uh, on whether, whether it's happening in the school? Well, the simple thing is to ask uh, what courses are taking place or get a friend to ask. That makes it simpler for you. And to ask in the written letter whether those courses are linked to common purpose because they're now starting to operate courses which are not under common pur purpose names. However... Wait a minute. 
I, I'm not going to show these in great detail, but uh, eventually a lot of information is going to come available to you. Okay, we're looking at Hampshire North, and that's a small selection of the common purpose people. Remember, there's 30,000 of them we're looking for, roughly. In addition, there's the children and the youth who've been through the programmes. So information is going to be made available to you, but for this presentation tonight, I'm not in a position to give you this with clarity. Okay, But we are going to make an asset available to you where you can research the documents yourself instead of listening to me. So, In the present climate, uh, the, the rate that the, uh, they're putting the bills up, the heat and electric and so forth, it's almost like they're inciting the people into riot, which under the New World Order means out of chaos comes order. But in your Leicester talk, you were saying that when you were speaking to the Muslims, that you said something that they were going to be used, or there was going to be... I said the Muslims were effectively going to be used as the Jews were used in pre-war Germany so for the scapegoat. There's, there's trouble coming, they're going to use them. Well, the, the idea is that you are going to become so annoyed with mosques springing up and the law favouring the Muslims in certain situations that, that strife is going to start on the streets. And, and I wince, I absolutely wince when I see this rubbish appearing in the paper. Now, one, uh, one of the meetings, we got onto this subject, some people find it a bit delicate, but I don't. I asked how they all got here. Who do I mean by they? I mean the immigrants. How did, they all, how did they get here? Did they fight their way ashore? Would anybody like to ask, answer the question? They were brought in. And who brought them in? Government. Yeah, politicians brought them in. So I said to the assembled company, so the problem isn't the immigrants in the first instance, it's the politicians who brought them in and created the problem. Now I say to you at the moment, and I really mean this, the other side is trying to fragment us. It wants us at each other's throat. At the moment, it doesn't matter where you come from. If you're inside the British Isles at the moment, we have got to keep people together. I would rather have whatever it is, 2.4 Muslims supporting us and fighting evil than see strife on the streets. But they are trying to engineer it and I have been very happy to say that the Muslims are effectively the new Jews. Lady in pink. My, one of my children at school is doing part of the curriculum, a course called citizenship, and never had anything like that when I was at school. But I just wonder if in a subtle way it's training them to think in a certain way and therefore to accept the EU state, the, the ideology that they're trying to bring in. Well, my instant reaction is most definitely, but of course the simple thing for you is to go away and really find out what they're teaching. One of the things I've learned, I've got two grown-up children, I, it makes me feel pretty bad. When I think back, I never checked what they were being taught. I trusted the school. And my advice to you is do not trust the school. It doesn't matter whether it's a primary school, it's a um, paid school, it's comprehensive. Don't send your children to school, Brian. Well, you're going to have to do that, although you're going to be in trouble. But you find out what they're actually being taught, and you will be stunned at some of the things they're being taught. Teach your own children at home a minimum of two hours tuition a day. If you can do that, you can yeah. teach your own children at home. It's the law. Well, if, you, if you're prepared to do that, it's, it's an obvious solution. Do I so. have another say? Um, I do a lot of research on things before I open my mouth, and I have to be 100% accurate, and I'll say, that judge is bent. And I've been in courts, and three times I've said, arrest this judge and called the security in, and all times they've stood up and said, I've got a conflict of interest here, I've got to stand down. <laughs> now, that frightens them to death, so technically they've done me in to stop me going into courts. Now, one thing I did some research on coming up this, um, I did some research on Muslims for a certain reason. And I said to this guy, that he knocked me over when he said it. He, I, said, you know, I said, what's going to end all this stuff, you know, all these problems? He said, oh, Jesus Christ is going to come, our saviour. And I thought, hang on, he just said, Jesus Christ, a Muslim? I didn't even know this. And he says, I can't wait until he comes in and destroys the banking system. And I'm thinking, he's doing that. 
But that is what's happening. Well, now, Jesus, the Muslims think Jesus Christ is coming. Well, like, well it's Jesus Christ is it. a known prophet within the system of Islam. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I thought, well, I've, I've gone through the Mormons. I know what their game is. I know what this is. I know what that is. But yeah. whammo, I fell over. Come well, on, where's that? Come when on. I had a conversation with a, a very senior Muslim, and I said to him something about the British Muslim Council, and he said to me, Brian, what makes you think the British Muslim Council is anything to do with the Muslim population? And I said, well, maybe the name. And he said, well, maybe, but it was a government-created body. I have learnt a huge amount from talking to the Muslim community up in the Midlands, and I can tell you that in the mosques, they are already teaching each other what is going on. If I go into my local Methodist church or Church of England, they have not got a clue. So. Um, you mentioned near the beginning um, about child, sort of child snatching or sort of taking away children from single families and stuff like that. Where do you kind of gather that information from and do you find that's a growing trend? Right, well, right, the question was where, where do we get the information from on the child snatching? And it was very simple. We did an article in one of the early papers on a couple in Cornwall where they were trying to take the child away from a lady. And we... We, well, it was actually David Noakes did quite a bit of work on this. I'm going to be absolutely honest. He opened that case up. He looked at the evidence, and the evidence showed that the parents and the mother were telling the truth, and the social services and the solicitors in the case were telling porky pies. Now, when you see the documentary evidence, you get interested. So we printed the story. Then the telephone started ringing, and other stories started to come in. And what impressed us was that the people who came to talk to us brought evidence. They brought evidence showing perjury in court, bent policemen, bent vicious social services people, lying barristers, falsified evidence, false accusations. And we, we have some people in the audience tonight who've been through this process and I can tell you this is not one or two cases. These are thousands of cases across the country. Because if you check the uh, tactics table, you will find that the intention to destroy families is a very high priority. Right. Um, is there any kind of advice on how you can recommend me to look to find out what I'm entitled to if you're experiencing trouble i don't know how old you are 29. right okay well as an adult you've got a right to see any papers or documents that were involved in your background um, i'd recommend that you seek out other people who've experienced the same sort of, of problem but it's empowerment this thing that was mentioned earlier you are now an adult get in there and ask the information you want, and don't take no for an answer. Stand up to the people, but demand the paperwork. I'll just go over the back before I come you back to you. For the, the protection of the public sector, like you say, the NHS and uh, the public you know, owned businesses, would you say the union is, is helping in that factor? Are they in on it? You know, is it a good idea to go with your union and you know, go on you, their you, side and say, look, you know, you're helping, you know, keep... You You've know, got to suss them out. We, we, we've been lucky enough in Plymouth to, to have a gentleman called Bill who was a very senior union convener, very well connected, extremely well connected. Initially, if I go back four years ago, he didn't believe what we were telling him, and now he, he does. And what he's discovered is that the same corruption is through the unions. You have got to check the individual people. The secret... To, to working together to beat this is you've got to go back to basics. The person you meet, it doesn't matter whether they call themselves Labour, Tory, uh, UKIP, Muslim, BMP, it doesn't matter what are they like as a person. And you've got to go with people you trust, trust your instinct. Lady? Just, um, I just wondered what your opinion was on this. My, my from the evidence I've seen, it doesn't matter which party you vote for of the main three, 
all three's intention is to lead us into Europe. Whether yeah. how loudly they're shouting about it varies, but um, do you agree with the parties such as UKIP? Is there um, do you see a future in this country voting in that direction? Which would be quite I'm going to be unusually diplomatic here and say that I believe, and we are now getting very excited by watching other people come on board with this. The time of party politics is over. And we have got to remove whatever it is, 600 and I'm going to say 640, because there are some good MPs. We have got to remove hundreds of MPs who are absolutely corrupt and rotten. And the way you remove them is by going into their, cons their surgery with a friend, telling them what you know about the state of the country, asking what they're going to do about it, and they'll give you a load of waffle. You then ask them whether they realise they're committing treason by giving the country away to a foreign power. They may laugh, but you then tell them very calmly and politely that if they do nothing, they are guilty of misprision of treason. And when the wheel turns, there must be a punishment for these people. Now, some people would say they need to be stripped of their position and pension, and some people would say, as traitors, they should be hung. I leave it to you to decide. Haven't they abolished the treason law, though? Absolutely not. This is one of the major, law, ma major lies and propaganda being okay. spread. Our constitution is 100% intact. The Lisbon Treaty is illegal and unlawful, and therefore it is irrelevant that it's been signed. But the fact that a group of MPs, civil servants and others have conspired to set it in place is treason. And to my knowledge, um, treason has now been reported in 22 police stations. I've done it myself, and it's very interesting to see the reaction of the police. They're no longer laughing. Gentleman at the back. Oh, lady at the back. by Bournemouth yes. University but the whole legal system has gone along with defending um, corruption in the university um, since I've been to see him he's just totally ignoring me he put a letter, he forwarded a letter from the university which is just a pack of lies um, and I wrote back and said that he promised me a chance to defend myself against these lies um, and a chance to see Secretary of State and now he's totally ignoring me so I wondered what, what would you suggest to do about that? Uh, well the first thing I'd suggest is that we, we uh tell the audience here that we're getting very, very interested in Bournemouth University. There appears to have been a major change of staff in Bournemouth University. There seems to be a lot of strange quangos now working with the university, and it is alleged that Bournemouth University is starting to train the trainers who will teach the future leaders. I'll leave you to work that out. However, I think the best thing we could do is expose your MP, if you like to give us... Uh, the evidence, we will print a story asking why this person is not acting. Very happy to do that. One more question. Uh, I, uh, have you had a question? So I can't yeah, remember. Go on, yeah, go on. yeah. Gentleman there? Uh, uh, Brian, I think I was just reading um, uh, something in the advertiser you know, this afternoon about, I think it's called body clinics. You know, the, the, the shutdown of the local um, surgery, doctor surgeries, and, and this consolidation into, I guess they call them polyclinics. Yeah. Is, where is this coming from? Well, th this, is, this is very easy. This is, the, um, this is the main drive to collapse the NHS. So what they're starting to do is build the parallel system. You are going to see the NHS collapsed and they are building an alternative system alongside it. Um, local health trusts and partnerships are very active in this process, and they're heavily infiltrated with common purpose. Um, but that's what you're watching. And at the moment, the government is delighted with all of the adverse reports on hospitals, whether it's disease or incompetence or theft, because that's undermining people's um, confidence in the NHS, and therefore... 
under David Icke's problem re reaction solution, first of all, you create a problem in the NHS. Your reaction is to say, what's going on? We need something better. And they're now giving you, they're offering you that something better, which is more localised polyclinics. They're also going to put um, medical clinics into schools. And we believe that that will also be linked to the compulsory vaccination of children. And we have a couple of people now working with us doing phenomenal research into what's happening with the academy schools, including the fact that some of them don't seem to have many windows, and I am not joking. Okay? But don't get too dragged down into the mire, because at the moment the establishment is beginning to get frightened. And what we've got to do is put pressure on so that people start to split. Is David Davis an honest person who has now split? I hope so. We need to watch. But my prediction is if we as individuals get out and spread the real word about what's going on, you're going to see more and more politicians starting to break away. The bad guys know that they're under pressure. I've, I've done enough, I think. Thank you very much. Can I just thank everyone for coming along, and can I thank everyone that's helped make uh, tonight happen, and especially Margaret, because she worked so hard. <laughs> Round of applause for Margaret. She's a one-woman political party. <laughs> Absolutely.